The science of love, what happens to your brain when you're in love? I believe it's undisputed that one of the most popular topics in our everyday life is love. We see it in movies, musicians sing about it, and poets continue to romanticize it. We've probably been in love too and felt the giddiness that comes with it. Although a lot is spoken about how love feels, but what is love? Why do we feel the way we do around our special someone, or simply when we think about this person? The reason we feel this way stems from the chemical changes in the brain. When we fall in love, there's a release of high levels of dopamine, a neurotransmitter, a brain messenger, similar to what happens when a person ingests drugs like cocaine. In 2005, Helen Fisher, a biological anthropologist, carried out a study on 2,500 college students. These college students were presented with photographs of acquaintances and photos of their special someone. While observing the MRI of these students, it was discovered that when the subjects were shown photos of their beloved, certain parts of the brain became active. These regions were the caudate nucleus and the ventral tegmental areas, VTA. Both areas are rich in dopamine, the feel-good hormone. Dopamine is associated with feelings of pleasure and reward, explains the joy and contentment we're filled with when we are with our loved ones. Another neurotransmitter is altered when we fall in love, serotonin. Serotonin levels decrease when an individual falls in love. Interestingly, a similar pattern occurs in obsessive-compulsive disorders, leading scientists to speculate that this is the reason we feel anxious and obsess over tiny details when we fall in love. Other chemicals released when in love are stress hormones, cortisol and noradrenaline. Both hormones are responsible for a variety of physical symptoms and emotional responses, racing heart, sweaty palms, flushed cheeks, and anxiety. In addition, being in love deactivates certain neurological pathways concerned with making critical assessments of people and being in charge of negative emotions, such as fear. It's no longer surprising why people in love tend to ignore or do not recognize red flags. Over time, after the initial giddiness of the falling in love stage passes, if a committed relationship is formed, Partners move from a more passionate and maddening love to a compassionate one. Dopamine levels are reduced, and serotonin rises to normal levels again. There's also a depletion of noradrenaline and cortisol. We no longer feel the obsession that overcomes us initially. Does that mean that couples in longer-term relationships no longer feel love? Not quite. Love remains, but with a different brain mapping. Studies carried out on participants that had been in longer-term relationships using the same format, observing MRI, while the participants viewed photos of their beloved, showed higher activities with the brain's basal ganglia. This area is heavily involved in forming attachments. A pair of hormones are also linked to forming bonds and attachment between couples. Oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin levels tend to be higher in women, this hormone is popularly known as the love hormone. It's found in high quantities in breastfeeding mothers and is attributed to the bonding that occurs between mothers and children from early on. Oxytocin is also released in physical activities such as hugging, kissing, cuddling, and sex. Vasopressin is more abundant in men and is known to be integral for forming attachments. Another research carried out on couples that have been married for 20 years or longer still showed neural activity in dopamine-rich areas, similar to that early stage of love studies. In other words, it's still very possible to be madly in love after years of companionship. All of this video focuses on romantic love and all the brain mechanisms involved. It is important to know that we can enjoy similar rewards and pleasure without being involved in a romantic relationship and without drugs either. The love between a parent and a child, between a dog and its owner, and one's love for their hobbies and passions can trigger similar pathways and provide the feeling of connectedness we need as humans. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, share, and let us know your thoughts in comments box.